I did not trust him. I did not want to have sex with him. And he pressured me for a, an hour and a half. And he kept saying please. And I kept saying no. I can't risk it. Like, I don't want to see him ever again. So it, like, changed my whole, like, college career. so they can see that it's not just like some girl that they don't know it could be a girl that like is their friend's friend or in their like social circle and then finally I was just like like you're not gonna give up you're not gonna leave this room you're not gonna get off of me you're mu like he's much stronger than I am I'm like a hundred pounds soaking wet and so I was like the only way I'm getting out of the situation is if I have sex with you so fine do your worst um, and he did um, my first few weeks at UNCA were pretty good I was in a lot of studio art classes I was in some mass comm classes um, so it was mid-September, I was at a party at UP, and I was just with a few friends. We were drinking, playing quarters, playing some other drinking games, and, um, and the last thing I remember was at 10.30 p.m., and um, this kid had handed me a beer. It was, it was open, I thought nothing of it, and then from that point on until I woke up the next morning at 8 a.m., um, I have no recollection of what happened. And when I woke up, I was in someone's room I had never seen before. Um, I had all these bruises on my inner thighs that just looked like someone was like grabbing on and holding really tight. Um, so I got my stuff together, walked back to Governor's Village, which is where I was living at the time, and a few hours later I get a text from the same kid who gave me a beer the night before, and the text said, um, hey, you're on birth control, right? And I was like, yeah, why? Like, I, I had no idea why he was asking. And um, he just replies back, because we had sex last night and the condom broke. I want to make this documentary because I think the only way we're going to see change about anything, any issue going on, the only way we're going to see a change is by confronting the issue head on and by talking about it and sharing stories and providing a safe place for others to share their stories. And just throughout this whole process, I've really realized how healing it is to to talk about what happened and and to talk to other people who have gone through similar things and it it helps not just me but other survivors realize that we're not the only ones who go through this being in a small campus like this where i feel like our campus avoids the alcohol culture uh, i don't feel like sexual assault is a huge problem like it might be on a lot of other larger campuses across the nation honestly in the sense I could say from the player's perspective, um, the people I played with and the people I knew were were good, were generally good people, um, good student athletes. Uh, the city, the atmosphere, everything about Asheville and the University of North Carolina Asheville basically is set up to where it's not as much of a problem as it is on a lot of other more traditional college campuses. Uh, so I think in terms of the athletic department, I think genuinely they do a good job of recruiting good people, it's just statistically you can't get 100% right all the time.
actually it was right around the time that um, Pokemon Go came out. I was super excited. I was like, oh, it's a really nice summer day. I'm going to go take a walk. Um, I was out walking maybe a few blocks from my house, like down Merriman, and I turned into, into the neighborhoods to try to come back, like, like loop around to my house. And as I was going, all of a sudden, I, like, this car kind of comes next to me, and they pull up the street. I thought, oh, like, they're just turning around, whatever. I didn't really think too much of it. Kept walking, realized that they were stopped, and then slowly following me, um, which was kind of weird. I was like, okay, maybe they're just going the same direction, be, just driving kind of slowly, being careful, whatever it was. Then all of a sudden, out of the nowhere, I hear that some, this male voice shout, do you like pantyhose? And I was like, I mean, like what? Kind of just didn't like ignore it, kept walking. Shout comes again. I look over and this guy is, is just is masturbating in his car with the window down, shouting at me, kind of like turning his body to lean out to try to expose as much of himself to me as possible. And just, it's not really what I thought was gonna happen when I was going out for a walk on a summer day. I was actually assaulted as a kid um, for the first time, so I had a stepdad who's no longer in my life, um, but he assaulted me basically the entire time he was married to my mom, and I was like five when it started and nearly 11 when it ended. And that, I think, affected the experience I had in college. I was in a relationship with this guy and he was like super dominant, um, like very like manly and all about his masculinity and whatever. But he told me he'd never had sex before and the first time we had sex was the um, time he assaulted me basically. Um, and he was on top of me and he kept saying like, have sex with me, have sex with me. And I kept saying no for an hour and a half and I looked at my phone when we got in the room and I looked at my phone when he got up to get a condom in an hour and a half past. Um, but I just like closed my eyes and shut myself down and I was like, just power through until it's over. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, I was sexually assaulted off campus at work. Um, I worked for a funeral home. It was, uh, it was really traumatic. I was not really able to function after. Um, I was uh, assaulted by a coworker. Um, I do removals, so there was a body in the van at the time. And like, it was just, it was awful. I mean, everything about it was awful. Yeah, I, I've tried to pretend that it hadn't happened. Like, I was like, this, this is not, I can just pretend that this didn't happen and it, it will be like it hadn't happened. Um, and then uh, that following Monday, I couldn't, I couldn't function. I couldn't do anything. I was, I don't know how to describe it, it was paralyzing. It was paralyzing fear. That Monday I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I hadn't told anybody, um, but I had admitted to myself that something was wrong. And the next day I realized that I was not I was not okay and I, did, I didn't really know where to go or who to talk to, so I went to the counseling center. So there's a lady at, uh, at the counseling center that makes these rice bags and puts lavender essential oil in them. And they, I still have my rice bag. They, uh, they put a rice bag in the microwave and they handed it to me so that I had something to hold. And then they offered me some candy. Uh, it's like, it, it is, thinking back on it now, it's kind of sweet and funny. They were and I'm sitting there like, like just sobbing. Well, a lot of people don't realize that us older folks have lives that we've lived before. And my life before was kind of wild and crazy. Um, maybe not all the best decisions I've ever made was into a lot of alcohol and drugs and partying and um, I had been uh, sexually assaulted and raped in the past which was pretty devastating as you can I, I can hear I'm getting a little nervous so it just kind of stays with you right you think you're you've worked through things so it's it's still difficult at times to talk about but I 
believe that talking about them is a healing thing. Well, we are really fortunate here at UNCA with our health and we have an integrated uh, department, which means we have nurses and doctors and PAs and psychiatrists and pharmacy here, along with case management and counseling services. We do, we have a DBT group, and I think one of my other counselors is doing a stress management group right now on campus. We have an outreach coordinator who is phenomenal at um, getting the word out about our services. We have a nurse after hours nurse triage system now for students who are concerned about their health or mental health. They can call her after hours. She can help walk through the process, help them link up to other resources. The counselors here are on call 24-7. So if a student is in crisis, they can come in and speak with a counselor during the day or we'll come out and talk to them at night. Yeah, so the law, the law would define um, sexual assault, especially um, in the second degree, which is where we see most um, cases being prosecuted, as um, as any sexual activity by force and without consent. Um, so those are sort of the three elements of, of the law. I think traditionally the belief was to teach to teach people to practice safety, um, so move in, move in groups of friends and not drink so much and carry mace. Um, and now the conversation is really shifting towards those behaviors that, that are predatory or those behaviors that are seen um, as perpetration of sexual violence. So really focusing on what motivates that and how we can change that culture. Uh, that being said, I feel like we do a great job with our education. Um, as far as with Title IX, um, organizations like Our Voice, in basically just informing Greek gentlemen of making good decisions with the influence of alcohol and making sure that we clearly define consent and that we basically hold each other accountable and don't make bad decisions. So our campus culture revolves a lot around education. If you walk through our our student union, you walk through the quad, anything, you see a lot of things raising awareness for sexual violence. You see a lot of educational opportunities, presentations, guest speakers, a lot of things like that to help raise awareness to the issue. And I know athletics, Greek, um, a lot of other student organizations on campus and student employees require students to go through sexual assault training. So I feel like our campus does a great job promoting the idea of awareness and education on sexual assault to help prevent these kind of actions. You can use the term sexual misconduct because our policy covers an umbrella of incidents. Um, it ranges from sexual harassment to stalking but we average about 26 incidents a semester. But keep in mind, students can come to our office when they have an issue off campus that we will discuss. So some of our numbers are off campus incidents. Well, normal investigation starts with the report. Um, and as soon as we receive a report, we contact the victim and provide them with the resources initially make sure that they have the support that they need, make sure they have an advocate available for them to support them and help guide them through the process. And then we begin the process of a thorough investigation. As of right now, most individuals just want us to make us aware of an incident and receive the remedies and resources to begin their healing process. Now, although we're not uh, prosecuting more, we are able to get more uh, victims uh, the resources that they need. We're able to get them in contact with counseling, our voice. Uh, so we're able to surround them with a variety of resources that all they, that although they do not wish uh, to prosecute, they are able to start that healing process. To reach out and start talking to people, there's a lot of recovery in that. Sharing your story, whether it's in the written word, whether it's in art, whether it's in music, whether it's in conversation, is extremely restorative. You know, just reaching out, just knowing that you don't have to go alone. You know, go to our voice, come here, go to a friend, you know, a mentor, anybody that you look up to and you feel safe about. Don't feel bad if you choose not to report. 
it's okay, you know? Although my story might not be as, like, like an aggressive, like, I wasn't physically attacked, I'm, like, not, there's no physical, like, repercussions, I, someone's doing something, and if my story can help those girls that can't share their stories, then I want to really try to make the difference. If anybody tells you it's your fault, they're just straight up wrong. They are misinformed, and you don't have to listen. You don't even have to keep them in your life. One, know that healing is possible. Know that um, that this is that sexual assault is an extremely traumatic event. That trauma is is real and can cause a, a lifetime of pain and suffering um, that manifests in different ways for people. Um, but know that there are people in your community, wherever you are, um, hopefully wherever you are, at least in Asheville, there are people who will believe you, there are people who will support you, there, will people, there are people who will get you connected to resources, um, there are people who will get you connected to other survivors. I think that people think that this is the end of your life if you're raped. People think it's the end of everything if you're assaulted. And it's not. It's it's not. I mean, it's, it's the end of a lot of things, but it's not the end of your life. So my biggest piece of advice would be like, know, find people that can help you know that you are not alone and you are not crazy. And if anybody ever insinuates otherwise, get them the hell out of your life. Like, there is nothing more damaging as a survivor of sexual assault than to hear someone tell me that I could have done something different. Um, because I could not have done something different. Um, and it's not my responsibility to have done something different. And it is never the victim's responsibility to change. Like, you are wearing a short skirt, why GG? Like, you were drinking, good, I'm glad you were having fun before some idiot decided to take advantage of you.